This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Welcome back to Known Podcast. We're so excited that you're joining us again for another episode today. And it's been an honor to be a part of this journey with you. And I hope and pray that as I've shared some of my thoughts, shared some of the things that, that, that I'm working on, that I'm learning, I pray that some of these things have spoken to you, maybe some practices you can you know, bring into your own life to help you grow as a leader, as a pastor, as a business owner, as a friend. I pray these things will help you grow. And you know, one thing that I think we all suck at, maybe as humanity, is resting. I think we've gotten so poor at spending time in rest. And because I think some of us, we've mastered the art of overworking, right? And others of us, we've mastered the art of being lazy, right? And there's a big difference between laziness and rest. I think maybe in your life, you've had somebody approach you and say, hey, I think you're a workaholic or maybe you're, you're working too much. You need to spend time with me. Or other people, maybe you've had people come to you and say, hey, you're lazy. And it's like, those things might be, you know, heart-wrenching for us to hear, but I think it's maybe when we hear that, it might be time to ask ourselves the question, is this true? Is it that I've mastered the art of overworking or have I mastered the art of being lazy? Which one uh, is it for you? And, and rest and, and laziness are two completely different things. They're com- two completely different things. And how I would determine the difference uh, between rest and laziness is this, is that rest prepares you for what's ahead and laziness distracts you from what's ahead, right? So, so, um, so rest actually restores our energy. It actually brings you energy. It's doing things that are going to prepare you, yourself, your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit for the things that you're going to do the, this week or this day, whatever it is. And, and, and laziness actually drains your energy because it's just distracting you from what's ahead. You might be doing activities that aren't adding any value to you that actually aren't helping you actually find pockets or moments of rest in your life. And rest is not laziness. It is not Laziness. I've heard people say this, but it's hard for us to, to uh, those of us maybe we're, we're overworkers, it's sometimes hard for us because we think that if I'm not working, I'm being lazy. You know, if I'm not working at my house, if I'm not working at work, then I'm actually being lazy. And it can be really hard for us to rest because we think that rest and laziness are the same thing. And it's interesting because our culture, what our culture teaches us is that productivity or success and influence is, by, is determined by how hard we work, right? So we believe that, that the harder I work, if I can work more hours, if I can, you know, maybe work six, seven days a week, that's going to help me become successful. That's going to determine my influence. That's going to determine my productivity, and so what we do is we, we get so caught up in what we're doing that we forget to take care of ourselves. We forget to take care of our bodies. We forget to take care of our minds. We forget to take care of our souls because we're so focused on productivity. We're so focused on success that we've become so busy that we don't actually have time for rest in our schedule because I don't have time for that. I got to work. I got to do things. I got to keep going forward. And so we get so lost in this process. And we see so many people burning out maybe this is your story or maybe we've seen so many people who 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 who, can't, who are just going from job to job because they can't seem to, to to actually fit in a culture or they can't seem to maybe show up on time or they, they can't seem like like this is a problem for us when it comes to rest and I believe that we need to learn how to rest so that we can actually prepare for what's coming so that way we can actually prepare for the things, for our schedule, for the busyness, for the things that we have to do in our life. And I think laziness comes from resting before we're tired, right? It actually comes from a place where resting is our priority rather than actually working really hard. And so we've rest so much that our body is so used to this restful, you know, state that when it comes to working harder, you know, daily it can be really really challenging we need to learn how to find the balance for all of us we need to learn how to find the balance between working hard and actually finding moments of rest there these both are so important we need to be hard workers but we also need to learn how to rest properly and rest is a theme that we see throughout scripture right if you you know if you know the bible maybe you do maybe you don't maybe you're new to faith maybe you don't you know don't you know follow jesus whatever it is but but there's so many moments in scripture where where rest is the topic of conversation, where rest is what we're talking about. And this is what Jesus said when it comes to rest in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He says this, Come to me, 
all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know what Jesus promises us? Is that when we are weary, when we're tired, when we're exhausted, when we have heavy burdens, when we don't know if we can keep going, when life is crashing down, the promise Jesus gives here is, I will give you rest. When you feel you're burnt out, when you feel like you can't keep going, when you feel like your soul is so tired and so exhausted by the circumstance, Jesus promises you rest. You know, some of us were so tired, we're so exhausted, and we're on the brink of burning out. Because, and the only reason that this is happening, because we feel like we're one deal away from, from how we define success, right? We're one deal away, we're one business partner away, we're one investor away, you know, away from how we determine success in our life. We think that only if I work harder, I can overcome this addiction, right? If only I can work a couple more hours here, maybe a couple more hours a week, couple more hours every day, then I can become as productive as I want to be. Then finally, I can get all the tasks done that I want to get done. If only I start working in a six, seven days a week, then I can finally find the financial peace that I've been longing for and striving for. But Jesus says to me, you know, it's not about how hard you strive. I think sometimes the striving is why we're feeling so weary, why we're feeling so tired. Or we're feeling so exhausted. That sometimes is the why we're doing. You say, sometimes you got to stop striving and we got to learn how to come to him and he will give you rest. Rest is so important. Rest is so key to success. Rest is so key to overcoming. Rest is so important. And we have to learn how to rest properly. But it doesn't end here. And it's so interesting because in verse 29, if we continue, it says this, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You know, rest is so important, right? But it's not just only about rest either. Then he says, take my yoke, right? He says, come get your rest, and then I actually have a task for you. You know, then I actually have something that will help you when it comes to working hard. You know, then I'll give you something, give you my yoke, take my yoke. And a yoke, if you don't know, is a piece of equipment, uh, a, a, far a farming equipment that puts two animals together and a in order for them to be able to accomplish tasks faster and with less effort. They can actually start to become more productive because they're carrying the burden, they're carrying the weight of whatever they're pulling together. Rather than alone, they're doing it together. Because the workload is shared and it makes it easier and faster. And so what Jesus is saying, he's saying, I will give you rest, but don't be lazy. Use my rest, take this time of rest, and then take my yoke. Take the ability to partner with me in carrying this burden. Take the yoke, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light, right? That's what it says in the next verse. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. We can accomplish more together with Jesus. We can accomplish more when we've been rested and when we realize he's our partner in it. When we realize that we, he brings us rest, and then when we're rested, he says, okay, let's go together. Take my yoke upon you, and then we can go farther. We can accomplish more. We can be more productive because we've actually taken time to take care of our body, our mind, and our soul. We've taken time to actually rest. You know, striving and working hard is not necessarily bad. It's good, right? We need to be working hard, but we also have to understand how we get rest in everyday life. How do we get rest daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly? How, where do you find rest? And I want to share with us three things today that I think will help us when it comes to finding rest in our life. Helping us not be too focused on work and forget to rest. Or for those of us who might be who, 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 that have dedicated our lives to rest, right? We've gotten really good at rest, which, hey, good for you. But some of us, we become almost lazy in it. We're underworkers or overworkers. And so I have three things that I think will really help us when it comes to rest. And then number one is this, and this might break your heart. Be excellent, not perfect. Be excellent, not perfect. Perfect. Perfection is unachievable. You will never be perfect. And isn't this the truth? And it's the truth. You will never be perfect. What you create will never be perfect. It's, and we know this, but it's so hard to live by because we want to be perfect. We want our business. We want our business deals. We want our families to be perfect. And they're not. 
and they never, ever will be. And I can't tell you how many times I finished pre- preaching a message on Sunday, and I think about the words, all the words I said that were wrong, right? I think about how many times I stuttered or how many times I forgot what I was supposed to say and the things I wish I said and the things that I wish I didn't say. Pretty much every Sunday I get off stage and think about all these things, and I think these things help me realize I'm not perfect. You know, I'm, I'm working hard, I'm preparing, I'm doing whatever it takes, and yet, I'm not perfect. I'm never going to show up on a Sunday and preach a perfect message. It's, it's never going to happen. And so we need to learn that we are not perfect. What this means is that it doesn't matter how much time you spend on a project, it doesn't matter how much time you spend on something, it's not going to be perfect. You can work as hard as you can. You can strive as much as you want, but you're never going to create a perfect product. And so we need to shift our focus from being perfect to being excellent. We need to switch our focus from being perfect to being excellent. So what this means is that you are not perfect. That means everything you create will not, will not be perfect, and it never will be. We need to determine the optimal amount of time or when we look at a project and say, okay, this is excellent. It might not be perfect but it's excellent. We should be bring our best, right? Excellence is bringing our best. You know, perfection is trying to bring something we can't even attain. We need to bring our best. Excellence is so important, but you will never, ever be perfect. It doesn't matter how long you spend on a project. This is the case for work. This is the case at home. This is the case in your marriage. This is the case in your church. It doesn't matter how hard you work on something. It's never going to be perfect because you are not perfect. You will never be and it will never be. You need to determine, again, the optimal amount of time that this project takes. Or when do you look at something and say, okay, this is excellent. This is the best that I can give. This is the best of my abilities. You can grow in excellence by doing three things that I think will help us when you come to excellence. Things that will help us grow is number one is be prepared and be on time. There's nothing more frustrating than showing up to a business meeting that you have to dedicate your valuable time to that you barely even have and the person who's doing the presentation shows up late and shows up unprepared. You're like, I've given you my valuable time and you're not even giving me anything that's valuable. You're showing up late, you're showing up, you don't even know what you're gonna say. There's nothing more frustrating than that. You know, if you wanna be excellent, show up prepared and show up on time. If you're supposed to be there at a certain time, be there at a certain time. If you're supposed to have something prepared, maybe you're in school, right, and you, and you have a group project, what's more frustrating than a guy showing up and saying, I didn't do what I was supposed to do, right? And so we need to learn how to be on time and be prepared. You know, there's this famous quote that says this, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Right? Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. We need to be showing up to whatever it is, business meetings, family dinners, whatever it is, show up on time and show up prepared to have a conversation. Show up prepared to not be distracted by your phone. Show up prepared to church. Show up prepared when you're serving. Show up prepared and on time. It's so key. If you want to be excellent, if you want to bring your best, Spend time preparing for when you have the presentation. Spend time being there on time. I know it can be hard, but excellence is giving the best that we have. So that's number one. Be prepared and be on time if we want to grow in excellence. Number two is be a learner. Leaders are learners. If you stop learning, you will stop leading. You know what made Blockbuster, if you know Blockbuster, right, this, this, this rental uh, company for VHS and DVDs, what made them fail was not understanding the future, was not learning the patterns, was not understanding what was happening in society, that we were going digital. They lost their excellence because they stopped innovating and they stopped learning. Excellence requires us to give the best that we have, and our best becomes better when we learn. Right? Our best becomes better when, with, when what we have to offer is better. And so how do we do that? It's by practice. It's by learning. It's by reading. It's by, by, by gathering information, by gathering tools to help you and to help people around you. If you want to learn to be excellent, learn how to grow in your best. And that comes by being a learner. We need to be learners. Do not stop learning. And the number three, when it comes to getting better, when it comes to excellence, is this, is be realistic. This is so key. 
Texans, right? When it comes to perfection, be realistic, but you, what you actually can do. Uh, re being realistic allows us to not overestimate our abilities. I don't know if you've ever watched American Idol or X Factor, and you see somebody go up there with the most confidence, and then they open their mouth, and it sounds like a dying moose on the stage. And my thought always is, who told them this was a good idea? Who, who told you that this was going to be good for you? Who told you, do you understand that you're not very good at singing? This is probably not a realistic goal for you because you're not very good at it. We need to be realistic about our abilities. We need to be realistic about our strengths. We need to be realistic about our weaknesses. We learn to be excellent and non-perfect when we understand the limitations that we have. Do you understand the limitations that you have in your life? Of course, you can start to raise the bar of your limitation. Of course, you can start to, to grow and your limitation becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you grow and get better as you learn, of course. But we all have things that, that, that limit us. We all have things that we can't do. And so how do we do this? Be realistic about what you can actually do. Be realistic about what you have done. Be realistic about what you want to see happen in the future. Be realistic about what you're capable of. And when we learn that we are never going to produce anything that is perfect, we open our, up our schedules because we have all the time dedicated to perfection, now we have available to us. So rather than spending two hours on a project to make it 5% better, we can spend two hours on a different project to make that project 80% better, right? So if we, if we realize that, yes, I'm not going to make this project perfect right now, it's excellent. If I spend two, three, four more hours on it, it's going to maybe marginally get better at 2%. But if I dedicate those two hours to a different project, that's going to make that project exponentially better. And so for me, when I do my message prep, I realize that, that, that if I spend too much time on my message, yes, it will be better, but how much better? It might be, you know, 5% better, you know? And so if I don't spend enough time on, a, on my message for Sunday, it's going to be marginally worse. And so I have to realize that, that what I dedicate my time to, what I dedicate my time, maybe because I'm trying to make something excellent when it's not going to happen, those two, three hours I could dedicate to something else to make that exponentially better. So we need to realize and be realistic about what we're capable of because it opens up more time in our life and time is the resource that we have, but we're all limited to the same amount of time, right? The most successful people in our planet and the least successful people, they all have the exact same amount of time. And so we need to learn how to take care of this. And this actually leads me to our second thing that'll help us grow as leaders. And I have two, and number one, uh, number one is that was to be excellent and non-perfect. And then number two is to learn time management, right? Learn time management. This doesn't mean that you do more. What time management does is it allows us to do more of what matters most, right? It doesn't mean that we do more. It means we do more of what matters the most. Our time is much like our finances. We have the same amount of time every day to accomplish things, right? 24 hours a day. This includes everything that we do, sleeping, eating, all of it. 24 hours a day. And I think that if we learn how to manage our time, maybe similar to when we you know, even invest our time or invest our, our money, it's the same thing. How are you investing your time? And I have three things that, simple steps that I think help when it comes to time management, learning how to, to do this. And number one, if you want to get better at time management, number one is determine your values. The questions are, what matters most to you? What are your values as a human, as a leader, as a pastor, as a business owner? What are your personal values? Not your business values, not your church values, but what are your values as a human being? Do you know the why you do what you do? Who is it that you're working so hard for? Who or what is your why? You know, we might highly value something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're working on making it a priority. You know, maybe for you, you look at your values, and number one value, you know, you might say, my value is my family. You know, others of us, we might, might say, you know, my value is financial stability. You know, for me, I might say, you know, my value is leadership. You know, you might say, my value is growing. You know, my values in my life are my faith. You know, my values in my life is my 
fitness? What, what are the values that you have? And then look at your schedule or look at your how you allot your time. Are you actually determining the things that make that, that add the most value? What are the things that you care about the most? You might say, you know, my why is my family. So what happens is we become workaholics in order to provide. Or maybe you struggle with working hard because you want to be home and you want to be with your family and rest has become your biggest priority that you struggle maybe to even keep a job. Is We need to realize that, it, it, that is, your, is our value of being present with our family or is our value be, being able to provide for our family? Those are two different things. We might say, you know, family is my value. I value family. But do you value being a provider or do you value you being present? And both are so important. There's nothing wrong with providing for your family, right? There's nothing wrong with being a provider. But there's also nothing wrong with being present. And so what is it that you value? Is your value to be present or to provide with your family? What is it that you value in your life? And, you know, rest has to become a value. Rest has to become something that's a value for us. Why? Because rest restores your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical capacity. Rest has the ability to grow our capacity physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. It has the ability to grow our capabilities, to grow when we're excellent because we're actually coming into a task with our brain on high function rather than coming into a task to get exhausted because we, we worked all night or we worked all week and we're going into Monday already tired because we spent so long over our weekend taking time to work rather than rest. If you don't value rest, you might need to determine why is it that I don't value rest in my life? What is it? Why is, is rest not a value for me? Why is that? Why is it that you don't you know, value rest on the weekends? Why is it that you don't value rest daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly? Why? You might, you might, you, you might have had this thought every time you sit down. You, know, you sit down, long day work, you finally sit down on your couch, and you think, oh, man, there's a million other things I got to do. You get to the weekend, you're like, man, there's my list of things at home is maybe longer than my things at work. I got so many things that I have to accomplish. And so you get so caught up in what you have to accomplish that you forget that you can accomplish more when you actually have energy. You forget that you can actually accomplish more when you're not so exhausted from working so, so, so hard and striving daily, you know, weekly to, to make something happen. And you're going into the week so exhausted. Resting is not lazy. Taking time to rest is not lazy. Resting is important for your longevity. You know, and just today I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and I hadn't talked to him in nine years or something like that. It's been a long time since we had a conversation and we we're just talking about spirituality. We were talking about faith. We were talking about work. We were just talking about life. And he said this, something to me that I thought was so fascinating and, and just really spoke to me. And this is what it says. This is what he said to me. He said, if you don't take time for your wellness, you will have to make time for your sickness. If you don't take time today, if you don't take time today to take care of yourself or to rest, if you don't take time this year or this month or this week to take care of yourself to find rest, you are preparing yourself to have to make time for your sickness. Taking time for rest today helps grow our longevity. It takes time to help us grow our longevity. It helps give us time to, to take care of ourselves. It helps give us time to learn. It helps give us time. <coughs> rest is so important for our longevity. Taking time to rest today helps us grow our longevity. So that's it. We, we have to learn how to determine our values. And then number two, when it comes to time management, is schedule your values. Create space in your schedule for the things that you value the most. I've had conversations with so many people. I've had conversations with so many people, and, and I say, hey, how you doing? One of the biggest responses I get, I'm busy. I don't hear I'm good. I don't hear it's bad. I say, I hear, I'm so busy. I hear this over and over and over and over again. I'm busy. And we have to realize this, is that busyness does not necessarily equate to significance or impact. Just because you're busy does not mean you're actually making an impact. What, what determines 
our impact is what we do with the with that time. What do we do when we are busy? What are you busy doing? What is it that you are busy doing? What is it? We need to learn to say no to some of the small things so that way we have the capacity or the time to say yes to the big things, right? What are some of the small things in your life that you've been saying yes to that's taking up so much of your time that a lot of the big things, the important things, you're not getting to because you don't have time for it. You need to learn how to say no to some of the small things in order to say yes to some of the big things. You know, you're not going to wake up one day having been to the gym four times that week by accident. You're, it's never going to happen. It takes time to, to schedule that in your life, to schedule that time to go to the gym. It takes time to schedule to have a date night with your wife. It takes time to schedule time to grow as a leader. Going to the gym is probably going to mean saying no to something else. It might mean saying no to a meeting. It might be saying no to watching sports. It might be saying no to something so that way you can actually go to the gym. And it's that in every area of our life. You need to create a date night for you and your spouse every week in order to maintain the value of family that you might have. Do, do you actually create space in your schedule to schedule the things you value the most? Do you do it? And we need to learn how to do this. Can, you might need to, in your life, create a day, a month where you dedicate to leadership development. You know, maybe you're a, a CEO or a lead pastor or you run a business and do you take time to grow as a leader because everything in life rises and falls on leadership. If we don't value growing as leaders, if we don't value learning, what's going to happen is that everything's going to come crumbling down because we are, have not, haven't dedicated the time to actually grow and we haven't dedicated the time to finding rest for our weary souls. We need to dedicate time to the things that we value the most. The scheduling of your values has to be non-negotiable. It has to be non-negotiable. Why? Because the urgent things will try and take over the things that are important, right? Do you schedule time for the things you value in your life? It has to be non-negotiable. Your marriage, taking time to, with your spouse has to be non-negotiable. Taking time with your children has to be non-negotiable. And for me, you know, time with our daughter Jane is, is non-negotiable. I will be spending time with my daughter every single week. And so Tuesday night is Jane and I's date night. So every Tuesday, we either you know, go out for dinner or we cook a meal together and we hang out and we play with her toys. Maybe we watch a show or we're, we're together every single Tuesday night. Why? Because it's a value. And if I don't schedule it into my time, it will not happen. I value time with my daughter and what's going to take over is things at work. What's going to take over is things at church. What's going to take over is things that I can't control. And I say, no, Tuesday nights are for me and my daughter. Schedule the things that you value the most or then they are eventually they will fall away and they will slip away from you. We need to schedule the things we value the most in our lives. And there's so many things when it comes to rest that we can do that I think will help us as individuals when it comes to rest. And number one is, of course, is sleep. You know, getting a good sleep can really help uh, when it comes to rest because we're actually letting our body recharge for the next day. You know, and exercise, going to the gym or going for a walk or whatever it is, that really helps you when it comes to rest. And you might think, well, that's exhausting. Like, I don't want to go for a walk. I don't want to go lift weights. I don't want to go run on a treadmill. I don't want to go on the elliptical, right? Like, I don't want to do that. But that's actually going to build your, you up more than you think. You know, uh, working out or exercise is so key when it comes to actually having rest because it actually builds our capacity for more. You know, eating healthy foods will help you when it comes to rest. You know, reading books or learning will help us when it comes to rest. Maybe it's conversations that build you up with the people that you love will help you find rest. Maybe it's spending time in scripture and worship and prayer. Maybe it's practicing gratitude to allow the stress of what we don't have to be conquered by the peace of what we do have. Rest is so important. And ask yourself this question. What brings me the most rest? What is it that I do daily? What is it that I do weekly? What is it that I do monthly? And what is it that I do yearly that actually allows me to rest? What is that for you? I think we all have to schedule things in daily. 
We all have to schedule in things in weekly. We all have to schedule things in monthly. And we have to all schedule things in yearly that will bring us rest. What is it for you that brings you rest daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly? And I have a list of a few ideas. Maybe you do this and maybe this can help you grow. But number one is maybe a daily walk around your community. Going for a 10, 15, 20, 30-minute walk every day in your community just to get outside in nature. To leave your phone at home, leave the TV at home, leave work at home, and just go out for a daily walk for like 15, 20 minutes. You know, maybe it's taking a weekly bath. Maybe for you, you know, taking a bath is just a place where you can just calm your mind. You can read a book. You can have some candles go in, and you can just rest in that place. Maybe that's that's weekly. You do that, or maybe, you know, maybe once a week you turn off all the electronics in your house. No TV. No, no phones. No video games. No work, and you just take that time with you and your spouse and you and your family, where you just turn it all off and you engage together and find rest together. Maybe it's a monthly day out of the month where you take one day with your family without your phones, where you just take a whole day. It's not just a night. You take a whole day, one Saturday, say, okay, electronics are off. We're going to be together. We're going to go out and do something. We're going to go to the mountains or we're going to you know, go to the park. We're just going to spend time today off of electronics together so that way we can actually grow together. Maybe it's, maybe it's um, you're going to take a, uh, take a week off every year. Where, where you take a week where you stay at home and you just rest at home or maybe you go away on vacation, you go to the mountains for a week, you go camping, whatever. Take a week out of the year to actually rest. Not just one day a week, but one week out of the year to actually rest. Maybe maybe for you, it's, it's, it's you're going to read a book every month that's going to help you grow as a leader that you can find rest, where you can you know, turn off some of our electronics and get, stop getting so distracted and we so focus more on the rest that we need. And maybe for you, it's, it's a daily time of worship and scripture meeting. Maybe you get up before your kids and you read the Bible, you maybe sing some songs, you you know, even like sit, like sing some songs on your guitar, right? Like, like turn on something on YouTube. Like, do you have moments every day to rest in his presence, right? Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. Some of us, we're not actually going to him. We're not actually going to the source and saying, okay, I need your rest. We're trying to do it all on our own. Create space every day to find rest through scripture reading and through being in his presence. Maybe it's a weekly date night with your spouse or a monthly date night with your kids. Whatever that looks like, what are you scheduling daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly to help you grow, to help you find the rest that your body, your mind, and your soul desperately need? We have to determine what works best for us and schedule it in. You know, for a lot of us, we're so good at scheduling in Netflix or scheduling in Sunday football or scheduling in, you know, hockey games, whatever. We've gotten so good at scheduling in these things, but we aren't very good at scheduling in things that help us disengage and rest. Rest is so important to your longevity. I don't want to just be a good parent for a few years before my schedule kills me. I don't want to just be a good pastor for a few years before my schedule destroys me. I don't want to just be good for a short time. I want to be great for a long time. I want to actually go farther. I actually want to be healthy so that we we can build healthy cultures. We can build healthy churches. We can build healthy homes. We can build healthy businesses because we've taken time to make sure that we are okay first. Rest is needed. Rest restores your soul. It restores your mind. It restores your body to go forward into the busyness, into the schedule. If we don't schedule time to rest, it will not happen because our lists are so, so, so long. Don't be lazy. Laziness will kill so many good things. But rest will restore the best things. Determine what brings you the most rest. What is it that helps you actually restore? What is it for you? What do you do on your days off? Do you even have days off? Do you even take time a week, a day a week to just take off? If God took a day off, I think that you can as well. 
right? I think that you can as well. God took a day. That means you can take a day. Let's learn to schedule rest into our life. Let's learn that, yes, we're not perfect, but we can be excellent. Let's learn to, to, to know what our values are and make sure that they're a part of our every day, every week, every month, and every year life. What is it that you value? Bring it into your everyday life. This is so important. Learn how to rest, and you'll go farther. You'll go longer. You'll go into things that might not even you might even not have seemed possible because you created space in your busy life to find rest we all need rest we all need moments daily to spend time in his presence in Jesus's arms and allowing him to just bring us the peace that we need and the rest that we need so I want to encourage you to find rest to create space in your life for rest I want to encourage you that you know working hard is so important Yes, it is, and work hard, be a hard worker, but also make sure that working hard is not your only thing. Rest has to be a part of our story, and I really do believe that you can do this, and I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for The Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast. And follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.